Hey church, thanks for joining me tonight for Wednesday Night Bible Study and Prayer Time. Hope you're having a great week. Uh, we're going to continue our study on the subject of love, and I hope that it'll be a help and an encouragement. Prepare your heart, and uh, we're going to share some more truths tonight from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Before we do that, quick reminder, check your email, and you'll uh, find our missionary prayer letter update. This week is from Cannon and Nancy Bloom, Truth Baptist Church in Flushing, and uh, be praying for this young couple. Pray for this exciting church plant and uh, just uh, remember them in prayer uh, tonight and this week, if you will. And then secondly, open up our prayer bulletin and be praying for people and the, the many needs listed there. Of course, let's remember to pray for the nation of Turkey and Syria, and of course, to hit again this week with an additional earthquake. And uh, we always pray that God will use these tragedies uh, as an opportunity to uh, have the gospel go forth clearly. People begin to ask questions. People begin to search for answers. So uh, be praying uh, for uh, the, the, the dear people there and pray that the gospel would be able to go forth and people might be saved as a result. I also want to encourage you to be praying for Sunday. Uh, Sunday, we kick off our Missions Emphasis Month. We've entitled it For Everyone. We believe that the gospel is for everyone on the planet. Every man, woman, boy, and girl deserves to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And then we believe for every Christian, uh, for every one of us, it's not only a responsibility, but we have great opportunity and privilege to do something to share the gospel with others around the world. And so uh, over the course of the next month, many of our missionaries are coming. We're going to have an international festival. It'll be a great opportunity for our hearts to be challenged. So I want to encourage you not to miss a week. Make sure you're here this Sunday. Our missionary Travis Dykes will be with us. He's a missionary in Botswana and in Ethiopia. And I want our church just to love on our missionaries, let them know that we appreciate them, we're praying for them, and let them really feel overwhelmed uh, and to be encouraged. And I hear it often. Our missionaries uh, say to me, we just love to be at all nations, and let's continue to, to make sure that's the case. So be here, be in your place, invite someone to come, and uh, he'll, uh, he'll be in the services this weekend, and you'll enjoy that. So we're excited about that. If you have your Bible, uh, if you'll look with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we began last week studying this idea of love, and really we've kind of entitled it Crazy Love, because the love we're talking about is not uh, a sensual, erotic love, or even uh, friendship, and buddy love, and not really a love that the world or the unbelieving world would even be able to understand. Frankly, we, we can't even understand it uh, as Christians, uh, except to the fact that we have been recipients of this amazing love that comes from God. And we know it as the agape love, a love that is a choice, it's a decision, it's faithful love. It's not always um, a love that demands reciprocation. It just is a love that goes beyond what we deserve and what we can imagine demonstrated to us by God himself through the person of Jesus Christ. And now as recipients, as children of God, we are told now to go forth in this love. We're to let the Holy Spirit work on us and to develop this same kind of love in our life. And it's a process and, and, and it's uh, um, rewriting years of thoughts and, and behaviors and reactions that come natural to our flesh to love like Jesus, but yet that's what we're told to do. And the power and the impact of that is enormous. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, you'll remember Paul wrote of, of, of really the priority that love needed to have. And uh, in our lives as a Christian, I mean, uh, people do a lot of things in life uh, and they do a lot of things for a lot of wrong reasons. People that don't know the Lord, they have some uh, human love and familial love and um, selfish love in their life. And, and, you know, there's some product and result to that. But as a Christian, our love is to go far beyond that. It's to be a godly love, a spiritual love, a love that has eternal weight and eternal benefits. And so Paul would say, if you have this kind of love, he would describe it as in, in chapter 12, verse 31, a more excellent way. Uh, it can make all the difference in the world. And so he, he would uh, use this comparison table and he would say, look, if I was the smartest guy around, 
I had some great talents and abilities. Uh, I had faith off the charts and I could tell mountains to move here and there. If I was uh, such a, a gift giver that I could feed all the poor, but I did all those things and I did it without a heart uh, full of godly love, then the result would be uh, emptiness, uh, vanity, futility, uh, nothing. And it really, again, goes to that principle that God cares about the reasons why we do things. And how many of us, even as Christians, have done the right things, um, but without a heart full of love, uh, without love for him, without love for other people. And uh, it's really uh, not been beneficial. We miss the reward and what could have been accomplished if we would have had the love that God had for us. And so he goes on and now becomes specific. And the truth is we could take weeks and weeks and weeks, but I guess as we go through these nine or 10 um, uh, products of love, evaluation markers, let's say, um, maybe you, you start thinking about this process and start evaluating in your own life. Does uh, do these characteristics describe the love that I have, uh, the love for God, the love for people? Um, do they describe my love? Have I seen the Spirit of God working in me? And have I seen my love for others begin to change for the good? And he gives us some of these. And again, remember John 13, 34, Jesus said, look, if you want the world to know you're my disciples, then you need to enact this new command. Okay, what's that command? That command is that you love one another. And so you're to love agape, love like me. What does that look like? And as we go through these brief descriptions, I think you come to the conclusion like me that, wow, this describes the love that Christ had for us. Notice in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, charity suffers long. Sometimes we translate that to be patient, but suffers long is so much more descriptive. Uh, it, it doesn't just hold on for a little bit. It, it is uh, suffering. So it, it, it's, it, it infers that it's not an easy time period. It's not an easy journey. There's suffering involved. And it is uh, lengthened. It's a prolonged period of time. Doesn't that describe the love that God has for us? I mean, for most of us, um, when we heard of Christ and we didn't just jump uh, and, and believe the first time, I mean, it was a process. And the things that we've put him through. The Bible tells us in Romans 5, 8, that when we were sinners, he died for us. He loved us even though we rejected him, even though we didn't want anything to do with him. And he suffered long. And even though we are Christians now, for those of us watching who have believed, boy, we still fail him and, and we trip up. And when we should obey him, we don't. And yet he suffers long and he's kind. What's interesting, if you read these words in the Greek, there's different tenses and uh, that these words are written in. And, and a few of these uh, descriptions are written in the middle voice. And you say, what does that mean without getting too complicated? What that means is that uh, the, the one who possesses this love is the one who purposes of his own accord to do it. It's not that something's being done to him, but that he has chosen to take the initiative and to put it into practice. And this is one of those uh, words, one of those descriptions, that he who suffers long and is kind is the one who has chosen to put his love in action. He is serviceable. He seeks to minister to get involved of his own accord, not because he has to, not because someone is threatening, but because he has love, he is willing to step in and to offer himself. Uh, that's a powerful thought. Is that true? Are we willing to suffer long with people? Again, I understand there's a balance and I understand there's a point in time when actually you and I could enable someone to continue to be in sin. And, and so 
Bible says, don't cast your pearls before swine and, and, and uh, not deal with a fool uh, according to his foolishness. So God grants wisdom, but I don't know about you, but I know in my own case, far too many times I, I'm willing to, to bail out and to give up and to quit on people probably far earlier than I know Jesus uh, has uh, done toward me. And am I willing to suffer long? And am I willing of my own accord to step in, to offer myself, to be uh, of service because of a heart of love? That's one, one characteristic. Here's another, charity envieth not. It's not greedy. It doesn't desire to have what somebody else has or even allow itself to, to go to the point where it begins to uh, determine that, look, I deserve that more than he or, you know, that that should be mine instead of hers. And uh, because of greed and jealousy and covetousness, it, it turns this person into a uh, an envious person almost to a point of I'm I'm almost willing to do what I need to do to get what I believe is mine. Uh, true love won't do that. Jesus didn't do that. If anybody had a right to demand and to force uh, love and subjection and respect, it would have been the Lord, but uh, yet he didn't do that. Uh, he... he did not sin. He uh, loved us. He was patient with us. Uh, true love does not uh, wish wrong on someone else. And we'll mention that in a moment. But it's not envious. Can you be happy with the success of other people? Can you be happy with God's blessings in other people's lives? Um, do you, does that bring you joy? Uh, that could perhaps be a telltale sign of what kind of love we have. Here's another, charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Here again is another usage of the middle voice. One who possesses that godly love, uh, he's allowed the spirit to work in him and he's trying to love like Christ. He has chosen not to catapult himself, to vault himself, to vaunt himself above others. He's not puffed up. Uh, even when he could take credit, even when credit may be due and deserved, it it is understood and it is accepted and the choice has been made that, look, I am not going to propel or advance myself above someone else if it means it's going to hurt someone else, it's going to negatively outshine someone else. I'm not going to essentially think of myself before others. I'm going to keep myself humble. Is that true in your love relationships? Is that true at the office? Is that true in your home? Is that true in your marriage? Some of us live in loveless relationships, and that's revealed because we're always trying to one-up each other. We're always trying to outshine and outdo one another rather than seek to put the other above ourselves. Here's another one, verse 5. Paul would say, look, love, godly love, doth not behave itself unseemly. It's just not rude. It's not offensive. Look, we're all going to offend. But remember what Jesus said, woe to the one who offends on purpose. Um, he's always thinking through, how does this affect other people? Now, again, ultimately, our first filter should be, uh, how does this reflect on God? And then if, it, if we go through that filter, then uh, I would submit to you, then we will respond to people in the right way. Um, are, are we uh, unseemly and acting um, foolishly around other people? True love, God's love, seeks not our own. Um, it doesn't always seek for what is best for you in the moment, personally. Again, Jesus in his humanity prayed, if there's another way, let this cup pass, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Um, are we always looking out for number one? Are we always to the point where, you know, push comes to shove. I don't really care about other people. I've got to get what I need to get and I need to, to be in a position which I need to be in. Or are we willing at times to put others above ourselves? Are we always seeking our own? We can seek our own and maybe get the things we want, but be alone. And that's not godly love. 
We're not easily provoked. Wow, that's a big one. We live in New York City and provocation is everywhere. Uh, anger and short fuses and uh, just uh, overreacting quickly. But godly love doesn't um, get provoked easily. Stops, it filters, it thinks. It asks the bigger questions. How does this reflect on God? What's the, the, the long game in this? What is the big picture? What is the final result? And doesn't just react quickly uh, and, and selfishly. Look, true love thinketh no evil. Again, middle voice word on purpose makes the effort not to choose to think badly or evil about everyone and everything. Some of us are geared that way. We become cynical through experience. Um, uh, it, it's, it's easier at times to do that than to think good of people and to try to find um, uh, something that is positive. And again, I'm not talking about the power of positive thinking. I'm not uh, suggesting that we all bury our head in the sand and, and be oblivious. Ignorance is not bliss. But by the same token, some of us just go negative right away. And some of us uh, just prepare to be disappointed so that we'll never be disappointed. And um, when you're working with people, that's detrimental. And I mean, can you imagine if God looked at us and said, you're all a bunch of losers and you're all sinners. I know your frame and there is no hope and you can't save yourself. And so what's the use? I'm grateful that he still loved us. He saw potential in us and saw how he could still receive glory from us by he himself cleaning us up, redeeming us, saving us, indwelling us, filling us, and, and equipping us to do his work. It was all about him, but his love is, is revealed in that fact that he doesn't think evil of us all the time. He doesn't always chide. His anger doesn't last forever. Boy, that's a powerful, powerful um, uh, test and evaluation. Here's another true godly love doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. It doesn't uh, find itself happy or joyful when wickedness flourishes, when people get unjustly in, um, treated. It, it finds joy and solace and comfort and, and peace in truth. Uh, that the truth won out, uh, that the truth was victorious. That's love. Love bears all things. Think of a cover. It covers. If you're a, a father, a husband, you seek to cover your family. Remember, the Lord is our banner, Jehovah Nissi. He covers us in our time of trouble, that I'm there. I'll take the brunt. I'll be that cover, my sh that shield for that person, that family member, that friend. Um, true godly love, Bible says, believeth all things, has faith. It's, it's willing to trust. Uh, some of us have gotten so cold and callous, we're not willing to trust. Um, and, and then it leads to the hope. We're not willing to, to look ahead, to presume, to, to um, uh, uh, have confidence in anything. Um, and, and that's sad. We're all new creatures in Christ, and with God, all things are possible. Notice, true godly love endures all things. As it's the cover above, it's the stability underneath. It it's, uh, stays under. And look, everything else may change, but hey, Dad, or hey, Mom, they're stable. They're going to love us. They're still there. I can count on that truth, um, just like God. Um, doesn't run when problems come, doesn't hide, doesn't uh, avoid. And uh, these are characteristics. I mean, the list could go on. And like I said, we could have a lesson on each. But ask yourself, um, are th these characteristics of the love I possess in my life for others? Now, if you're like me, you look at this list and you say, yeah, I have some of these. And especially with this group of people or with that person. But no, not with that person. And, and we get it. And, and I would hope all of us would conclude that, look, we, we need to work on some things. And there's a certain people group or a certain uh, object of love that um, maybe we find that uh, we're not equipped and we're not there yet. And there's more growth that is needed. And that's the point. Over the next few Wednesdays, we're going to look at uh, uh, 
objects or targets for our love. And so if we know these are the goals, this is the product, this is what it looks like to love like Christ, that, you know, we're, we're to look like him. And uh, that's how people know we're his disciples. And so the, these all describe his love. Remember, he didn't just love us. He is love. And so I'm to love like him. And so I need to let him work on these things in my life and, and toward all people. Uh, I pray that God will be able to do his work. And if he... If we'll let him, we'll keep working on these things, we'll make a big difference. Jude 22, the scripture saying, if some have compassion, making a difference, and we'll make a difference. Uh, we'll honor God, uh, we'll impact other people's lives, and we'll be blessed. So I challenge you, go back through, read this passage, and those areas where you know you need to grow, let God work in your heart, begin to pray, God help me. And God will begin to do his work. And may we love as he has loved us. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this night. I pray we'll take these truths, ruminate, think about them, process, and apply them to our lives. Lord, we can't do it without you. But thank you because of your love for us, we can do all things. So help us to represent you, we pray. Bless us the rest of this week. Help us to love a world for whom you died. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. And God willing, we'll see you this weekend. Looking forward to a great Sunday.